Hey everybody, Coach Queen Kelly here to help you gain confidence to conquer the obstacles to your vision, purpose, dreams, and goals. But today, today I was studying my word and I knew it was something that the Lord wanted me to share with you. So I said, what is it, Lord? And I heard in my spirit, Psalms 91. And I was thinking, Psalms 91, like, <laughs> what is it to say to that? Everybody knows Psalms 91 and it means different. Uh, different things to different people, but I know how to obey. So that's what I did. And when I did that, I'm not going to read the whole Psalms 91. I'm going to ask you to do it. If you don't know it, the Psalms 91 is filled with promises. It's filled with angelic protection. It's filled with promises over sickness or disease. It's filled over pestilence, uh, the terror by terror by night and the evil uh, will not befall you. Neither shall the plagues of night I dwelling. It's filled with the promise of angelic protections. He'll give your his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. At least you dash your foot against a stone. You shall call upon me and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation and deliverance. It's filled with all kinds of promise. So I knew that. And so I went to read it, y'all. I got stuck at verse one. And this is what he wanted me to share with you. Did you know that Psalms 91 has a condition to it? It has a responsibility to it. It has a promise. It's filled with promises. But in verse 1, it's the condition to those promises. Verse 1 is the resp our responsibility in order to enjoy the, all of the promises that come after it. So let's talk about that for a minute. Psalms 91, if we if we don't do, in other words, if we don't do verse one, it negates it. He doesn't have to fulfill. It disannuls his judicial responsibility to do all the rest. So all the angels, we think of protecting us and all that stuff that, you know, why we may be sick or why we may not be experiencing some of those promises could be led to two things. One is just a total absence or ignorance of them being promises, period. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Not because the knowledge is not there, because they rejected knowledge. Therefore, will I reject your children? So when some things are happening in our households or in our lives, and it's not in adherence or in line with the word of God, it could be that we have not given enough attention to the promises that have been given to us. Or it could be that we're not keeping our part of the bargain, that we're not doing our responsible, we're the part that we're responsible for, for the rest of the promises to happen. And it could be a mixture of the two. So let's take care of that right now, because you're going to need Psalms 91 to work for you. You're going to need that. So verse one of Psalms 91 says, he that dwelleth, in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So let's talk about our responsibility. The word dwell in the Greek means to dwell, remain, sit, abide. Sit down, to be set, to remain, to stay, to dwell, have one's abode, to inhabit, to set in place. So if any part of our lives spiritually is not set in place, is not remaining, is not abiding. If we're dating God instead of being married to him, you can't depend on the rest of the promises, darling. If we are not dwelling, if we're not remaining, if we're not sitting down with him, 
then you can't expect the rest of the promises. It's just like having a boyfriend. You have a different expectation of a boyfriend than you do a husband. When you got a husband, it's like, I've given you everything. I'm dwelling with you. I took on your name. So the expectation of that is for you to do your part. To do your part to be faithful to me, to love me, to sacrifice for me, to protect me, and all the other things that come with being a husband. I am expecting that from you because I married you and I'm fulfilling my role as a wife. So if we're not doing that with God, if we, you know, not dwelling with him, we're not living with him, we're visiting the secret place. We're going in every now and then, but we're not really living there. We're sitting when we want to, and then we come back when, when, when we need to. Then you can't expect him to fulfill all the rest of the promises for you, darling. <laughs> it's a dangerous place to be. The next word I want to bring out is abide, because he who dwells I'm sorry, I'm going to bring out secret place. Let's talk about if I'm going to abide, if I'm expected to dwell somewhere, which is the secret place, let's talk about what that is. The Greek word, the secret place, is sit there. It means to cause to sit, to abide again, to set. There's difference between something that is set or when the cement is still you know, it, it's still, we had our cement porch done outside not too long ago. And we were told, don't walk on the cement for a few days because it's not set yet. After those few de days, it's set. We could do whatever we want on it. So is the relationship set? Is it set in place? And it also means covering shelter, hiding place. Hot, shelter, secret place, shelter and protection. This is what the secret place is. So are we visiting or inhabiting? And are we sitting and abiding? Is it set or in the covering, the hiding place, the shelter and protection of the Lord and all that that represents? So again, an easy way for us to think of it. Don't date God. You marry him. Take on his name and all that that represents. He has many different names. You get the full benefit of all of them when you marry him. <laughs> it means when you give your life to him, but when you give it not haphazardly or not give it and then take it back, do what he wants you to do sometimes and other times not. Look. We dealing with a world right now where we cannot go back to forth. That is very dangerous for you. And when you're expecting the promises of God to protect you and to keep you from the plagues and a thousand falling on one side and 10,000 on the left and you just looking, but it not coming nigh you. That's dependent on your willingness to dwell in the secret place of the most high, to abide under the shadow of, of the Almighty. So let's talk about the Almighty. Let's talk a little bit about who he is and then what you can expect. Shaddai is Almighty. It means all powerful. God Almighty. It occurs 50 times in the Old Testament. Forget my dog. It has a name by God was known to the patriarch. Some scholars trace its origin, origin back to Shaddai, meaning mighty, unconquerable. Others relate its origin to Ekadani, word for mountain, indicating God's greatness, strength, or his everlasting nature. <laughs> Another explanation of Shaddai is compound of the particle she, which means, therefore, all sufficient God. You, when you got God, you ain't got to go nowhere else, darling. Eternally capable of being all that his people need. Listen, he's over delivering here. And he's asking for a couple of things from us. He's all sufficient. Everything that we need is in him. And the one thing he's asking for is for us to dwell, to abide, 
and not visit the secret place, his covering, his hiding place, his protection and his shelter. And that part that says shall abide under the shadow means to lodge, pass the night, to cause to rest or just lodge there. So are you lodging in the protection of God, in the promises of God, in the will of God, in the obedience of God? The one thing that he does not own that it's our responsibility to give him, which is our obedience and our willingness to abide. There's so many other things. Shadow also means a protection and a shade. <laughs> we have the protection. We have all of the other promises of Psalms 91. But again, none of them relate to you or me. If I decide not to abide. So you could choose to be either pitiful or powerful. Choose only one though, darling. Because you can't be both. I love you.